Oh, cool, I can teleport around. Wait, what? Hey, everybody, Winstreak here. Today we are going to look at move to behavior, specifically how it manages to accidentally move through solids, and one type of solution we can use for this problem. Looking at move to, we have seven different variables we can edit. We have max speed, the maximum amount of pixels per second that our object will move. Mine will start out at 1400. Acceleration, how quickly the object increases up to its max speed. Mine will be zero, which means it will instantly get to its max speed. Deceleration, how quickly the object loses speed. And just heads up, this variable interacts with other things such as gravity from your platformer. So just something to keep in mind if it is not acting how you think it should. Uh, especially with slower deceleration numbers. But we are going to be using zero so it will instantly stop, so ours should be pretty normal. And a rotate speed, which is the amount of degrees in which our object turns per second. And we have zero, we don't rotate. Next we have our boolean set angle, which forces the object to look in the direction it's moving. Ours is set to false. Stop on solids, which will make solids block our object from moving, which ours is set to true and enabled which is whether or not this effect is currently active and ours is set to true. So for this experiment I am going to also have the platform behavior running. If you're not sure what that is for reference think of Mario Brothers uh, the side scrolling type game where you can jump around gravity all that fun stuff. So I'll be able to move around with my keyboard using platform and then on my mouse click I will activate move to and it will essentially be like a hook shot shooting me to my mouse position. And as you can see as we move around we have no issues and I can click and I'll quickly move to my mouse. Also if I click behind a solid object I'll crash into it and stop my move to so everything works as expected. But I think I want my hook shot to move faster, maybe almost instantly. So I'm going to pump up the max speed to 7000. So now clicking around everything works great and the speed is super fast. I'm definitely satisfied with how fast my hookshot speed is, and to celebrate, I'm going to bounce around like a madman. And then it happens. Somehow I end up going right through a solid wall. But how? Uh, it comes down to ticks. Gross, right? Well, not that kind. Each second our computer is running our code and making changes roughly 60 times. This amount will vary up and down for different computers, but for simplicity's sake, we're just going to do everything as if it's 60 all the time. So when we ran our move to at 1400 speed, this meant we moved 1400 pixels in a second, and that gets broken down into ticks, so 60 different times, which means every tick our object is moving roughly 23 pixels. And seeing that some of my solids are only 16 pixels wide, this means technically even our 1400 speed could have broke through. It was just less likely. So then once I increased our speed, we end up moving close to 117 pixels every tick, which means it's very easy for us to accidentally skip over some of our solids. Are we doomed? Cursed to live in a gaming world where the max move speed has to be under a thousand pixels a second to stay safe? As the kids are saying nowadays, holy farts, of course not. Side note, there's a chance I don't know what the kids are saying. But I had an idea, and my idea was a sight range. Essentially it would follow around my mouse and always come from my player. And I've never actually done this before, and it ends up being a lot easier to figure out than I expected. I started out knowing that every tick I wanted a new line, that way when I moved my mouse around, it would instantly rematch up with my mouse. Which meant also, every tick I had to destroy the old line, so I didn't leave infinite lines all over the place. I also knew that the start point would be my hero, and that I needed an angle from my hero to my mouse, and also the distance from my hero to my mouse. Which those are two built-in equations we can set. And then last I set the origin on our vision to be on the left side. That way when we change the width of it, it stretches only in one direction rather than outwards. And that'll keep the vision starting on our hero. And essentially I just set the width of our vision to the value that I got from the distance equation. And now when I run my code, I can look around and it looks like my character is shooting lasers everywhere, which is awesome. And our next goal is to stop the lasers on solids. And to make this code more widely usable, I created my platformer with a tile map, which is just a common way to do things. This means I couldn't hope to just grab the left side or the bottom of a solid and bump into it, because it's actually all just one large object, and grabbing a different side of it would just actually push me off of the map completely. So I instead decided to shrink down my vision. So I'd initially set the width 
to the distance that I found. And then if I was overlapping a solid, I would reduce that size by one pixel at a time. I put all this into a loop, meaning the computer can't move on to the next piece of code until I shrank it all the way down to where it no longer overlaps a solid. I was worried this might cause lag and delay issues, but surprisingly, I noticed no issues, uh, even when I quickly scan my cursor around, shrinking and stretching out the vision. So from there, I simply had to switch my teleport location from my mouse instead to the end of my vision. And I did this by simply adding an image point to the right side of my vision and instead teleporting to the image point of my vision. And this all worked with just two minor issues. Occasionally when the vision ended right next to the solid, sometimes I get stuck in the wall. So I was able to get rid of that issue by reducing the width of my vision by an extra 0.4 pixels after it was done. And then the last issue was I needed to make sure my teleport action happened after my vision loop. And that just ensured that the vision width finishes setting before the player actually teleports. Quick side note, I started this out with move 2 since I was essentially making a hook shot. Now that we're more along the lines of teleporting, I changed it to set position since it's just a much cleaner built-in option that Construct gives us. And since I changed it to teleporting, I set it up so I can either go before or through a solid. I just can't land on it. All this code you can find on my itch.io. I will throw it in the description below. And hopefully you guys find this useful. And I'll catch you all in the next one.